<clears throat> okay, so maybe this will clear up um, my position on the second coming. Or the immediacy of Christ returning. Shouldn't Christ have returned within the first century or something like that? Or within the first two centuries? Um, <clears throat> You know, I've said in the past that the Old Testament is a history of people getting shit dead wrong. Well, the apostles followed in this traditions. <laughs> um, of worship, of who God was, who Christ, or who God is, who Christ is. Um, biographical accounts. These are, are reliable. But what do you constantly see in the Gospels? The apostles are misunderstanding Christ constantly. They think he's going to come with a sword. Right? Because of that kind of midway that uh, Daniel has written. <clears throat> I mean, that's how we can date Daniel, where he gets everything right, and then boom, it actually goes off track. Um... So people are waiting around for this sword carrying dude uh, and angels to come out of heaven and fight the, uh, the evil one and Israel is going to reign forever and the king of Israel is going to be the ruler of the earth and all this stuff. Um, Jesus keeps telling people, no, you're getting, no, it's, you're getting this wrong. And we see that uh, Mark is written before the fall of the temple, right? <clears throat> so is a lot of Paul. I mean, how apocalyptic are <clears throat> Peter and John acting in the book of Acts? We see Paul's early stuff talk about you know it's gonna this is gonna really you know when he's kind of new in the faith probably when he he's a good evangelist but should he really be guiding these things you know he even gives oh there's some to guide and some to lead and some of this and, that. and he even gets so audacious to say is you know, you've listened to me as if i'm christ why do we let that slide with paul i mean i think paul is manic depressed i don't think he's the mouthpiece i uh, I don't think he is the, the Christ or the second incarnation of the Christ. So Paul in his young days, he's very, oh, he, he's like a hyper little kid hyped up on sugar, right? Oh, and this and that and this. And then you see things like Second Thessalonians and stuff. Oh, wait. Mm. You know, don't, don't, uh... Don't don't sell the sell your house just yet. Don't no, no Harold camping stuff yet. And then you see, you know, as he gets older, or if you want to attribute the pastorals to you know his followers immediately after his death, I don't care either way. To me, I always saw it as Paul realizing. Uh, you know, a lot of times, even on here, you, know, you speak with a lot of passion, and then. Whoa, people took that the wrong way. Right? So he's reacting to this stuff. So he says, no, you know what? Those people who forbid marriage, no. And he you know, he starts going through this stuff, you know, like, uh, some people are becoming these crazy ascetics, and we see this Gnosticism breaking out, right? But uh, all throughout the Gospels, Jesus is constantly missing. No, I'm not. That's not what the... The, who I am, that that Jewish Messiah, that's not, it's, uh, you know, he, he keeps saying, no, you're getting it wrong, constantly. You know, and I put, I mean, I think Second Peter is somewhere in this early to mid-second century. I think the Apocalypse of John can be accurately dated to 69 AD. So, I mean, I got a wide spectrum of dates here, but even with that, um, I mean, I'm assuming that most people are, are less crazy than me and, and think that the uh, epistles are 
and uh, the writings of the New Testament are their traditional dates and not some wacky, crazy, uh, modern, revisionist, uh, critical scholar view of some of the things that I hold. Uh, but, uh, <clears throat> we see this this happening and then the the, the, the shoot the, the offshoot of the church that actually uh, is not Gnostic or Judaizing or Docetic is like Ignatius and Irenaeus being like hey whoa you know talking about the management of the church and setting this up because uh, I mean do we listen blindly to the scriptures or are they a witness is our authority of the church, Christ and the church? But Matthew said this and that was incorrect, or, or, or John said this and that was incorrect, or, or Paul shot his mouth off here and, and he's an ass. I don't care if any of those people mess up anything. When you look at the full 2,000 year history of the church, that's the evidence for me. I am, I mean, following fanatical Jews of a backward people of a Roman province that I mean look at the stuff that winds up getting written down you know these guys and Simon Peter's married he's the head of the Apostles it's like I said before Priscilla and Aquila are married evangelizing women are running the household household or the churches whole households are getting baptized whole families um, you never, never is Jesus reported saying a, a negative thing about family or marriage. You know, he just says some people will be married, some people won't, and some people are forced to be married. You, you uh, hear Paul, the harshest thing he says is, uh, and again, they're getting persecuted by the Jews like crazy and kicked out of everywhere. He says, uh, yeah, it's better if you don't get married, but uh, better to be married than burn. And I think burn means burn with passion. I, I don't think, and I think most of the scholars would agree with me on that. I don't. I've, I never thought it meant hell, because again, uh, I I don't see that imagery in the Bible for one. And even when I used to, it it just doesn't fit the context. It takes the people who go with the line of let's keep getting this wrong. Let's act crazier and crazier and <clears throat> take everything super literally or read into stuff, this, this total dichotomy. Let's, let's have a us and them mentality, you know, flesh and spirit, the, the, the chaste androgynous um, us against those sex-having, child-bearing idiots out there. And the church, I mean, the church always says, no, 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 it's not totally Judaized and it's not totally docetic. It's, no, it's this thing. And to hold, I mean, to actually be a true moderate, you have to have a lot of passion because you have to passionately argue for reason and common sense and, hey, yeah, let's let's have sex and children, but let's not, you know, be freaking pornographic and orgies and stuff. Or you, know, you, you got these two extremes going like crazy and it's, when you have two extremes, usually the truth is somewhere in the middle, right? That's where the that's where the church had been. It's not compromising things. Hell, I mean, I could give you a view of things where it looks like uh, the Apocalypse of John is written in absolute antithesis to Pauline uh, epistles and, and teaching and preaching. I mean, who are these seven letters written to? Wow, that's what church. That's what Paul taught, or, hey, uh, the, the writer of uh, the Apocalypse of John is pissed off that women are in churches, and that uh, Rome is totally evil. Hmm. See, Paul kind of says, you know, don't, uh, you know, if you get punished by the Romans, you get punished by the Romans. It's your own damn fault. And respect the authorities. That's not... Not how uh, John, the Apocalypse of John, speaks. 
He's pissed off that there's a, a woman, women running churches, you know, Jezebel. And the, the he talks about the apostle, which is not really a true apostle. I mean, you could cook stuff like that up and go off on a tangent like that, you know. I don't know of any freaking scholar would say that, but it is, oh, the second coming had to come or else. What do we recognize the Apocalypse of John as? The Eucharist. What's the earliest document that's not even in the New Testament? It's the Didache. It talks about baptism. Oh, you can't dunk the person, do it this way. You can't do this, do it this way. You can't do this, do it this way. And it talks about the, uh, the Eucharist. The baptism and the Eucharist. Oh, that's what they were practicing the whole time. That's the important part right there. That's the how-to of the stuff. The other stuff is this, these works that are being written and read by people who are doing this stuff so they already know. You don't have to fill in the blanks from That's why there's such a problem with Protestantism because there's too much blank stuff and there's a lot of rhetoric and people are just shooting their mouth off. You know? Was Paul writing a letter to the Galatians or was he writing a letter to every single nation from the time of Paul until the end of days, you know, modern day China, 17th century Africa, uh, 10th century Russia. But it says in this, what what does the Christian church look like? Is it? It seems people, even Orthodox, you can't break this. I well, not Orthodox people trying to look at Orthodox still can't break this idolatry of Scripture. There's some things where I see it as Paul talking authoritatively, where he's not just giving his finger. Like you're an ass. I mean, I love Paul, but I think he was mad at the present. Does that mean he wasn't? A, he wasn't from God? No. What can we trust? What can't we trust? Hey, you know what? We've got the Holy Spirit working through the church for the last two thousand years. Maybe it could point us in the right direction. Now, of course, I don't expect ever the church to come out and say. Yeah, Paul's an ass. It's much more respectful than I am. She's the mother church is so much more respectful, right? But it has two thousand years of wisdom. Uh, this uh, second coming it had to come in the first century. Uh, I can see how you get that if you're if you're thinking that these are this is dictation, but. Uh, these are people that witness God incarnate. They're going to be a little loopy, aren't they? Um, I hope that kind of clears things up and didn't cause any problems. I'm trying to not make waves now. I, I would rather have somebody be a, a happy Protestant for the rest of their days than to uh, them to get some twisted view of orthodoxy and, and, and lose Christianity. I don't want that to happen. I would... I've been I've been thinking about never talking about theology ever again on here uh, because of recent events. But um, peace to you, my guts of Serbia, Syria, and Ireland. Take it easy.